Hello there. I'm Pickle Rick! Let's do it, guys! Right. It's morphin' time! What's up guys? Brendan back here and today with another episode of Geek Culture Talk on the channel. Yes, what's up guys? And today we are reviewing the latest Marvel film, Eternal. So, yeah, so I haven't done a review on a, a Marvel film in a little bit because uh, straight up right now I'll say that I, I'm aware I'm behind on a few reviews of some Marvel stuff that came out over a month ago, like Venom came out a month ago and What If wrapped up over a month ago. Like, I'm aware I'm behind on that stuff. Uh, my apologies on, on those reviews. Uh, I, I legitimately forgot about What If, honestly, to review that one, so I'm, I'm working on that one. Also, Venom, have, I, I knew I had to review that one, I just haven't been able to get around to that. So, I'll get to those reviews, I will, but I want to review Eternals first because it, the film just came out recently, and I just saw it, like, last week, so I'm going to review it. So, yes, this is my review for the Eternals. Now, Eternals is a, it's an interesting film, it's definitely, like, it's a, the most divisive Marvel film of all of them, because of course before the film came out, I was seeing all the reviews like of people saying it's some saying it's good, some saying it's not good. Like it was like it's it's the first Marvel film on Rotten Tomatoes that has a rotten score, uh, which I'm like what? And I'll, honestly, I don't give a crap about Rotten Tomatoes. I don't like I I stopped looking at their website and their reviews a, a few years ago. Like I just I don't get, care about their reviews. I don't like their system. I don't I don't think it's good at all. So I don't like how they do it, so just whatever, I don't look at them, so I don't, I don't care what they say, I don't give a crap about them, but whatever. But everyone online was just saying, oh, this film's not good, I'm kind of like, okay, and I was honestly not sure what I was going to think of this movie, going into it, I'm like, alright, am I going to like it or not, I have no clue, honestly, like, I was not really a big fan of the director Chloe Zhao's previous film, Nomadland, which won Best Picture of the Oscars. That film, I struggled to stay awake, and I almost fell asleep several times through that film. Uh, and one best picture, everything, I'm like, I don't get it. Honestly, I think it's a very boring film, honestly. The Father with Anthony Hopkins should have won best picture, surely. If you've not seen The Father of Anthony Hopkins, like, go watch it. It's on Amazon Prime right now. Uh, for me, at least in Canada, I'm not sure if it's for you got on Amazon, for, or for the rest of you in other parts of the world. I don't know, but if it is, watch it. If it's not... Rent it somewhere, I don't know. Go watch it. That's a friggin' amazing movie. Watch it. It's so goddamn good. Better than my land. Should have won. <laughs> I'm, not get, I'm not getting into a rant about the Oscars. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I was not sure what I was going to think of this movie. Uh, and like, so... And the, and the trailers were... I was. I did like the trailers. I wasn't like getting too into it when I saw the trailers. So I was like... I honestly had no idea what I was going to get into with this film. I came out of it and I thought... It's fine. <laughs> like, just, it's fine. It's not... It's not great, but it's not bad. Like, it's really not. Like, it's a okay movie. Like, okay in a good way. It's not a bad film. It's good. It's an okay good film. Like, it's not bad at all. Like, I just don't... Honestly, after I came out of it, like, my brother and his one friend were all kind of like, yeah, that wasn't bad. That was good. But we were kind of like, what's all the reviews talking about? Like, saying it's like the worst Marvel film and such. Like, <laughs> I don't know. So... And so right now, I, right now, I'm doing my just general review of the film. I will be talking about spoilers later in the video. So if you just want to hear my general thoughts about spoilers, this is it right now. And I will tell you once we get to the spoiler section, you have to cl click away and such. So, yeah, but for now, this is my general thoughts on the movie. So the film, it's the most unique Marvel film of them all, honestly, because, like, it's so, it's, it's very different compared to every other film so, which makes it like really interesting and such. It has a very, a very massive ensemble cast of like some really great actors, like some big name actors in this, like Salma Hayek and Angelina Jolie. So those like some, those are big names. And also they got like Richard Madden and Kit Harington, the brothers from Game of Thrones, Jon Snow and something Stark. I don't know. I didn't watch Game of Thrones, which probably a good thing because then I wasn't disappointed by the final season. <laughs> but yeah, they're in it, and a bunch of our great actors like Lauren Ridolph, Brian Tyree Henry. Kumail Nanjiani, just a lot of great actors are in this film, a lot of great performances in general, 
Like, everyone, everyone does a great job, so it's a, a really solid cast. And, you know, all the characters are all very interesting. The Eternals, like, they are... They're very not well-known characters from the comics. Nowadays, they'll be known to this film, but... In the comics, they were way... They were more D-list characters than the Guardians of the Galaxy before their film came out. They were... Like, I knew zilch about them at all. Like, when, I, when this film was first announced, I'm like... Who are these guys? I don't know who they were. They were crea creations of Jack Kirby back in the day. But I just knew nothing about them. I heard... I've never heard of them, as far as I know. So... But I, I like that. Not knowing anything about them whatsoever it means like, I go in this film with a, a fresh look and not know or expect anything of the sort. So that's, that's always cool, not knowing anything about a comic book material. So, but the cast is honestly, it's, it's really fantastic because like there's so many characters of like different ethnicities and like sexualities and like disabilities also. Like there's, there's characters of Asian descent and like Indian descent. There's a gay, gay characters. There's like a deaf character. Like the first like both gay and deaf characters like in the MCU. So like, a lot of like, diversity in the film, like it's honestly, it's really that's all really great. Like it's like that alone is like a fan, it's fantastic. So great job on that part of Chloe Zhao and Marvel. And you know, I, I like I, said, I liked it. I thought it was it was cool. Uh, the film also like it's it's also beautifully shot. Like it's it's all the cinematography is great. And like it's also like Chloe Zhao, she insisted that like that she wanted to film on location, use practical sets. Like and that's most of the movie. Like there are definitely some scenes where. They're on green screen just based on the scene they're filming where they can't make a practical set of them, that they, they need to be on green screen and such. But, like, throughout the rest of the movie, like, basically, I, pretty much every scene, I think, is on location or practical set, which is, you know, great because it help, makes the movie look really good and it looks amazing. Uh, and a lot of the costume design is pretty good, you know. Well, they all look pretty cool. I remember some complaints early on when the first trailer came out saying, oh, this is how you water down Jack Kirby's amazing colors and designs of costume with your very bland suits and I'm like not bad like it's not like they look good uh there's a lot of great character arcs in the film also and such like so, some of them have like oh, a piece of black dirt thing on it's got a piece of black fabric on the green screen uh, hope that's not on the camera frame uh but yeah a lot of great character arcs in the film i really enjoy a lot of the arcs the characters had the deviants who are villains in the movie like, they, they look pretty cool. I like them. Like, the CGI and special effects, like, looked very good. And the Deviants, like, they looked really interesting. They're, like, the main villains. They're, like, they're, like, these kind of, like, weird stringy, almost. Not, like, stringy, but like, they have, like, very, like, a lot of lines just around them. Like, a lot of wiggly, like, m lines. I don't know how to describe it. But it looked very cool and interesting. And the Eternals, like, the whole plot of the Eternal basically, they are these group of immortal beings who came down to Earth to help protect humanity. Like, they came down, like, like 5,000, 7,000 years ago, like something like that, like years ago, like back when humanity was still like some in some of its early days. So they helped, they helped guide humanity, like a helpless guy, like, you know, survive. And, you know, they were only, they were only told they, they can't interfere with humanity. They can only interfere when deviants are involved. They can't interfere with anything else because they need to let the human race, like, you know, progress as they would without your help, which makes sense. And so, yeah, we see a lot of them throughout history, a couple points of film. The film, a lot of times, jumps around at different points, like, to the modern day, of course, some past scenes. And we see how the Eternals really have affected human history in different ways throughout the MCU a little bit. Like, we see... Life me, I forget the name of this thing. I'll put it right here on the screen, what it was. That's the name of it. Uh, it says, like, this dagger that uh, Cersei gave one of the early humans they met. And, like, that dagger became its actual... Uh, it's actual real-life famous dagger from, like, years ago and such. Like, Life Man, I cannot... I wish I remember the name. She looked, she looked it up. <laughs> so, but yeah. That's cool. It influenced stuff like that. So I think it's, that's really interesting. So I, I dug all that. That was pretty cool. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think what's another thing to say that's good. <sighs> I don't know, yeah. That's a lot, there's a lot of the general stuff. I love, love the, all the stuff I just said is very good. The story is also an interesting one. I thought it, it was pretty good. I think, though, that... With its length, like, it's, it's a long film. It's, like, Marvel's second longest film, like, just after Infinity War. Like, it's, you know, the length at times works with the story. Sometimes it doesn't quite work with it. And it's all the same with how they jump around through time and time. Like, it's not, like, major a lot of times. It's not too much of a problem, but there are, there was at least one time in the film they jump back to the past where it kind of threw me off or I jumped back and forward in time. Like, one time, one time for sure, at least, it jumped into the past where I was kind of, like, are we in the past now? And I still wasn't quite sure. And I'm like, okay, we are in the past. So, it was like, once in a while, it's like, okay, I'm not quite sure if we're in the past or not. 
Most time it's not like that, so that's fine though. So, yeah, and a few, a few other things, like, there are some other things, like, um, some characters, like, I, I love a lot of the characters in the film, like, they're all very interesting characters and, like, have different powers, they're all very unique and such, like, each Eternal is, is different in powers, have different power sets, like, there's two sections of the group, there's, like, one se section of fighters, one section that's not really fighters, uh, they gave official not names for them, I forget what they are. I always say I should research some of the things I'm going to talk about in these reviews. I never do because I'm dumb and forget the stuff. But yeah, all Eternals have different, like, powers, like Icarus. He has the power of flight, super strength, and heat vision. You know, not like Superman, but, of course, they create super... They actually reference Superman and Batman in the film, so... First time DC's referenced a Marvel film. So that was that was interesting, and it's also weird that I'm just hearing them talk about Mar DC characters and such. Which, I mean, like, DC does that a lot of time on, on CW. It's always... It's always weird just hearing them talk about the other company and how they're a fictional universe in that universe. Like, on, on CW, like, The Flash does it constantly. They reference the Hulk and Spider-Sense and Spider-Man 2, specifically. Like, it's kind of, it's always weird to me. But, yeah. So, so, he has those powers. Cersei, who's our main character we follow in the film, she has the power to, like, you know, turn objects into other stuff. Like, she can turn water into sand or uh, wood into steel, so that's pretty cool. Uh, then there's their leader, Ajax, who can heal people. There's, there's uh, Kingo, I'm going to his name. Uh, he has, like, energy blast projection powers, which he does, like, finger gun stuff. So cool. Uh, Makari was a speedster. So he can run very fast. Gilgamesh, who has, like, can, like, forge his, like, like glowing like, gauntlet on his hand, like, super punch people. Um, Fina, who can create these, like, weapons, like, usually swords and blades. And it's Droog, who can, like, mind control people. Fastos was like their like like tech guy. He can create a bunch of like technology stuff like that. Sprite who can ca cast illusions and like go invisible and such. Uh, just, uh, so yeah, all very unique power sets they all have. It's all very cool. So yeah, and and I like all the characters, but like some don't get enough development. I feel in the films, like some get more development than others. Some don't really get as much development. I'm like feel like I don't, didn't really like that. But like I mean, maybe they'll probably get more development in the sequel. So. Whenever they make it, like particularly with like with Makari, she like she didn't have a lot of like development. I would say like because like cause the film a lot of we see the Eternals like finding each other and getting back together, and like Makari's the last one they have to find such, and they do, and she kind of just like it's it's like oh hey Makari, all right let's get to this. It's like not much was with her, but she had some stuff, but like not too much. So I'm like all right, so there's that. There's also some parts of the film where they say stuff that contradicts things later on, which I felt was something I noticed very easily, and I'm like, what? At one point in the film, they say how, oh, Fastos, he gave up on, gave up on humanity. Like, almost a few seconds later, we cut to him with, like, with a husband and a kid, and suddenly like, he's saying, no, I got a second chance, and I'm okay if humans again. I'm like, all right, so you didn't... It just feels so weird how they said, he gave up. Nah, actually, no, I didn't. I'm good with him again. Like, just... And there's another point in the film where they say, uh, we can't, we can't beat this, this guy, we can't beat him. But then they easily incapacitate the dude later on, I'm like, like, not even that long later, I'm like, we can't beat him! You incapacitate him very easily. Not beat him, but still, you can easily, like, stop him. Like, it's, uh, it was like weird stuff like that, I'm like, alright, like, what the hell. Uh, so there's all, all that stuff. Uh, there's also, there's also comedy in the film, I will, I will say, the comedy in this Marvel film... Like, it's not, it's not one of the most funniest films. Like, it's not, I wasn't really laughing too much in the film. Like, like, I mean, Kingo is kind of meant to be our, our funny character in the fil film, because Kamal, Kamal Nanjiani has a background in comedy, so he's kind of supposed to be, supposed to be our, our funny guy in the movie, but, I don't know, a few of his jokes I laughed at, not too many, and my brother and his friend kind of agree the same thing, too. Like, yeah, he's not, weren't really laughing at too many of his jokes. Like, they were, like, awful, it's like, they weren't, like, too funny. His one buddy, Karun, I, we found actually was, like, much funnier. There's a lot of scenes in the film, because, like, he's, like, he's, like, like Kingo, because in the film he becomes, like, a, a Bollywood star and such, and, like, Karun's, like, his, like, his pal, his, like, work girlfriend, or, like, for exactly what his title was that he dealt with him in the movie, but, like, I guess he's his agent and such, and, like, works with him and such. But whatever, he, like, follows him throughout the movie and such, and, like, doc, films a documentary they're making about the Eternals getting back together. And it was a funny scene where, like, at some point... Like, just, like, he keeps whipping... Every time they keep breaking his camera, because they're like, stop filming this, he's keeps whipping out another camera, and, like, Sprite's like, like, how many cameras do you have? Like, just... And another part where he's like, 
Like, Kingo got, like, a, a great, like, headshot, and he just shots the crew and, like, Did you get that shot? And he's like, got it, sir. <laughs> so, like, he was much funnier, I found, than Kingo. Well, I mean, King Kingo had some good scenes, like, I think Karun was just a bit funnier. So, there's that. Uh, what else to say? I don't know what's another thing to say about spoiler stuff. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I think that's, I mostly said everything I can of before going into spoilers. Yeah, honestly, it's a very, yeah, honestly, like I said, it's a, not one, not one of my favorite, the MCU, but it's, it's, a, it's a good film. It's okay. It's a good film. Like, it's not, it's not bad. Like, I recommend seeing it, like, definitely, like, go check it out. Like, if you're a Marvel super hard fan like me, you're gonna go watch it, but if you were debating about it, go see it, definitely. Like, it's a, it's a good film. Like, it's not great, but it's a good. Oh, yeah, also, the Celestials in the film, like, the main one of the film, let me, what was, it, what was that guy's name? And again, it was, like, Hersh, I think, or something like that? Ereshom, that was the main Celestial's name. Like, they looked, like, they looked pretty cool. Like, like we never, like, properly seen a Celestial, only, like, in, like, brief, like, flashback scenes from Guardians. But, like, we saw them proper this time, like, and they are, they are pretty cool, they're pretty cool looking, like, and they are, they are massive in design, like, just, like, as, I, like, the Eternals are, like, about, like, just, like, just a fragment of their size, like, it's insane, like, they're, they're massive beings, they look really cool. So, yeah, overall, I rated the film, like, a 6 out of 10, it's not one of the best, like I said, but it's, it's okay, like, it, it's a, it's an okay good film, like, there's a lot of stuff I like in it, like, the characters, performances, a lot of, like, story decisions are great, and, but there are some stuff, like, sometimes the lengths didn't quite work, or some weird, like, contradicting lines, and, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some other stuff I can't get into, why I have that rating to, like, talk about in the spoilers, which I'm about to now, so, yeah. My rating was a 6 out of 10, like, not, not a perfect film, but it's not a bad film, it's a okay, good film, so yeah, 6 out of 10. But that was my general thoughts on the movie, so I'm about to get into my spoiler section now, so if you want to click away if you haven't seen the film yet, do so right now, because I'm about to go into major spoilers for the movie. Uh, skip to this time code here, so you can just go to the end of the video if you want to, where I just, you know, sell my thoughts again, and whatnot. So, yeah, whatever. But yeah, so if you want spoilers, click away now. So, alright, let's get into spoilers now. So, yeah, there's a few things I want to say. One thing I I, I wasn't really too big a fan on the movie is how... Because, yeah, the Turtles, they were together for, like, quite a few thousand of years, but then some of them, they all split off after, like the year 480, I think that was when it was, or uh, like 14,080, 14, something like that. Uh, and yeah, they, they all get back together later on as time goes on, but like, in the movie, like, Ajax is killed very early on in the modern day, like, at the start, and it's like, alright, I, I kind of felt like that was a bit, like, cheapest, I'm like, kind of, kind of feels like lame that we're not seeing the whole gang together again, and then like, then they also kill Gilgamesh later on, of course, which, again, I was kind of like, Man, it kind of wants to seem like the whole group, like, together in the modern day again. Like, I don't know. It's not like a weird thing to complain about, but I don't know. But, I mean, Gilgamesh got at least a bit more screen time, and, and like, his... Uh, I liked his character a lot. He had a great relationship with Thena and, like, taking care of her with her, like, her madgery disease, if that's what it was called, I think, where she her memories keep kind of slipping in and out. Like, that. like he had a good, like, like chemistry with, like, uh, Thena and stuff. It was pretty good. So that, that was sad when he died, but... He got a little more to do with these. Ajax, I was really surprised that, like, when she was died early on, I'm like, huh, really? Just like that? Like, just get her to sell high from the movie? Like, all right. I mean, she's still in the movie quite a fair amount, because, like, of course, like I said, there's, like, flashback scenes, so you see her a lot in those stuff. So, yeah, you know, I kind of I kind of wish we saw the whole team together again at some point in the movie, but, you know, it is what it is. One, one thing I honestly, I really enjoyed about this film so, of course, the main plot, like, the full main plot of the film is, of course, the demons are back now in the modern day and such, and we find out, of course, they're all trying to figure out what's going on, and, of course, when Ajax dies, Cersei now is given, like, the leadership role of the Eternals, those with Ajax, like, orb things she used to communicate with Ereshmen of the Celestials, and we find out the truth behind their mission on Earth, it was not, they thought it was to, like, protect Earth from demons, and then when their time is finally done, stop protecting them, they would go back to their homeworld of Olympia. Turns out that is not the case. They've actually been there to prepare the Earth to be destroyed because this, years ago, the Celestials have this method where, like, they put these, like, seeds in, like, the center cores of plants that will birth a Celestial, and how it works is that, like, the human race, or, like, any species of any plant, like, that's how it gets born, the Celestial, by, like, just the species of that plant, just, like, you know, evolving and learning and doing all this stuff, and, you know, the Deviants, they created them originally 
to like destroy apex predators on the planet that would kill off a lot of those the species, but then the deviants end up becoming apex predators themselves, so they created the Celestials, not Celestials, the Eternals. The, the Eternals, the, <laughs> damn it, the Celestials created the Eternals to defeat the deviants, and that was the whole method. So as long as they kept defeating the deviants, letting the human race keep moving and evolving, like that this new Celestial will be born, and of course, like I said, Celestials are massive, so that Celestial is going to just rip right through the entire planet and just kill everyone. And Celestials, of course, have been living on Earth for 7,000 years. They're like, yeah, we don't want to see it destroyed now, so we're going to actually save this planet. And so, yeah. And it's interesting, like, some of the characters, like, like most of them are like, uh, yeah, man, yeah, I don't like that. We should actually do this. Because a lot of them are mad that we've been lied to all these years and such. So a lot of them are, are for that. Well, some are actually not really for that exactly. Kingo, particularly, he, like, he's not for it. He's, like, saying that was our mission, and we were not the bad guys. We were doing our job. That's what we were, like, here for. And, and you know, he, like, leaves the team at the end. He's not in the final battle at all. He leaves, he says, no, I can't take part in you guys killing the Slash. Like, I'm not going to fight you guys, but, like, I have to leave. Like, I just, my beliefs, I, I can't do this, which I find interesting. And he literally does not participate in the final battle at all, which I thought was a bold move to not have one of your main characters, like, in that final battle, which I'm like, that 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 was pretty good. I like that. But, of course, with that, it leads us to, like, honestly, like, one, one of my favorite things about the film, I love this, the whole story beat of it. Like, it's very, why it makes this film very unique is that we found that, Icarus, he actually, he killed Ajax, like, he found out, like, seven days before he met up with Cersei and Sprite that he went to Ajax and she was telling him the truth, find about their reason why they were on Earth and such, and, like, he's like, alright, cool, so our mission's almost done then, but then she's like, actually, no, I don't kind of want to do this now, I think it's wrong, because she saw how the human race, like, thrive and survive, like, in the five years when, like, of course, now snapped away half of the population and such, so she doesn't want to do that. So, and Bidicarus is like, we have to fulfill this, this journey, so he kills Ajax, sends her to die at some de 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 deviants. <laughs> Completely bumbled the word for a second. <laughs> but, and he reveals that in the film, and like, honestly, I thought, like, that was, like, really good. I was like, a, that's a great, like, reveal and twist, because, like, you know, not too many, there's not too many twists that happen in the Marvel films, but, like, when they do happen, they, there's been some really great ones in the, in the films, like, of course, when we found that Vulture was Liz Allen's dad in Homecoming, that was a great one because it just caught you off guard completely. Or when we saw Red Skull return in Infinity War because, like, you just that was the last person you expect to see on Vormir. But now this one, I thought, was, like, just even better because it's, like, because this, this is, like, one of your main characters of the film. Like, he was a secondary character after, like, Cersei. He was, like, the secondary main character. And we've been following him throughout the entire film. We thought he was a good guy. But turns out he's actually... I kind of our villain of the film now. I mean, there's no real... I wouldn't say there's actually a technical, like, for real bad guy in the film. I mean, there are deviants, but even then, they're mostly just kind of, like, part of, like, the distraction and such. I wouldn't even say they're really their main villain. So there is this one, like, deviant whose name is Crow, or whatever, or something like that, and he's voiced by Bill Skarsgård, Pennywise the Clown. And so, you know, like, he... He's not only a villain, like, he's there. He's kind of just part of a distraction and, like, a, a threat, but he's not, like, our main villain. And honestly, Icarus is kind of... I wouldn't call him our main villain, but, like, he basically is. So, like, I thought that was such an interesting and bold choice to have this character. You would fall in the whole movie, and all of a sudden, hey, I killed our leader, and now I'm a bad guy, kind of. Like, I just found that, like, such a interesting... I really dug that. I thought that was, like... That was great. I mean, in the end, he did not say a bad guy. He does, like, after all... He tries killing Cersei, he's about to kill Cersei, but realizes that he loves her too much, remembers all the time he spent together, him and the other Eternal also realize, I can't do this to my, my family and such, so he actually ends up helping them, like, to, like, stop, they form the Uni Mind that helps destroy, like, the Celestial, and, like, in the film, when they call it the Uni Mind, the only thing I thought of when that happened was the Buzz Lightyear movie, like, not the new one coming out, but, like, there was an old one, like, years ago, called Buzz Lightyear Star Command, which, like, a... It was a felt a top uh, backdoor pilot movie for a TV show, and they the, the little green men in that film had like a thing called the Uni Mind Two, and they were always like the Uni Mind. <laughs> so I just thought of that immediately. I was like, that's what I'm thinking of. It's like funny. But also, even that Sprite also joins Icarus, and she kind of comes a villain a little bit too because Sprite we find out also was also in love with Icarus apparently, and like, because like I mean she she's a kid in the film, but she is like she's played by a kid, but. She's, like, of course, thousands of years old, and she is actually an adult, technically. She's, like, mentally mature and such. 
But of course, she was made like a kid, so she can never be with Icarus and such, so that pisses her off always and makes her mad, so of course she joins, you know, Icarus later on as a bad guy and such. But then, of course, later on, she gets, she does deal, like, help join the others and such to destroy the Celestial. And of course, at the end of the movie, she does, like, Cersei has a little bit of power left after she was able to like, destroy the Celestial and, like, from also the orb they used to create the Uni Mind and such. Because she, like, got a lot of power by doing that. So she I mean, asks Bray, I have a little power, power left I can grant. I can make you human so you can actually properly age and such. And like, live a proper life. And, have, and she's like, do you want that? And I'm like, yes. So she does that. And I'm like, alright, pretty cool. Because it also explains a way how they're going to, how, it, when they do sequels with this character, why she ages now. Because I remember thinking, like, all right, how do you explain in later films, like, these are eternal, char immortal characters that can live, like, for years and, like, not age a day. How do you explain that with a, a kid, like, that will obviously age, like, the actor will? And, of course, this is how they're going to explain it. And it worked. Like, it worked for character storyline. It, was, it wasn't a forced thing, like, hey, um, this kid's got age, like, when we do more films, so just make her human. So it worked for her storyline, so I thought that was handled very well. My throat, my throat is unbelievably dry while talking. I have to keep like drinking every between takes. So yeah, I really like dug those storyline beats with like Icarus and Sprite, especially. Uh, it's nothing I forgot to mention actually in my general thoughts, but I really liked actually. It's funny like all the Eternals have like are named after like, like their names are all very similar to like actual like like myths and legends we've heard throughout the years in our world. Where like like obviously Icarus, he's named after Icarus, the one who flew flew too close to the sun, his wax wings melted. And that's what he does in the film. He actually flies into the sun and dies after like he feels like he betrayed them and says he's, he's sorry for doing that and he flies away and dies. Which actually, that's actually how that rumor started. Like Sprite back in the day started that rumor saying, hey, like, yeah, he, Icarus, he flew too close to the sun. So like, I mean, a lot of them are like that. Like Athena, like they name, and then she's, of course, the legend of, of Athena and such. So like, I love, and that's all very interesting. I like that. It was pretty cool. Oh, and Sprite, I think I learned from my Easter egg video that in the comics, Sprite actually inspired the work of like Peter Pan a bit by, with Tinkerbell, so I, I feel like that might be a thing in this movie, I have no idea, so who knows, but I, I think that's very cool how like just how much they've influenced the world like that, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, what's, what's about the sales? So now, oh yeah, so they killed the Celestial, but the Celestial was almost close to coming out of the planet, like just destroying it, so like he like, you see the head rising from the water a bit, and, like, uh, the fingers coming out, like, and, like, it's massive. But, like, like Cersei turns the Celestial into, like, like mar marble, like, and such, and just frozen there. So now, on the Earth, in the MCU, just there's this giant, like, th like fingers and a half a head just sticking out of water somewhere. Like, it's this massive thing that you'll probably see, you can see from space. Like, like the Celestial, they're massive. Like, at the end of the film, when you see that uh, one Celestial... Like, the Irishman, like, you see him over the earth, like, he's massive, it's insane. And, but, like, honestly, that's super cool. Like, I like how Marvel now, going to Phase 4, they're slowly starting to, like, uh, like, carve over, or, like, starting to, like, like, what's the right word I'm looking for? Like, like, architect over, like, the earth with, like, their own kind of stuff. Like, showing how far we're now in the MCU, showing a lot as they're changing. Because, like, because like, even recently with the recent No Way Home trailer we saw that they're actually updating the Statue of Liberty in New York in the MCU by replacing the torch with Captain America's shield to honor, you know, Steve Rogers and the Avengers, like, for saving all of humanity and such, and the universe. So, I love how they're actually, like, really kind of architect archite architecturizing. I have no idea the right word I'm looking for here. I'm probably not, it's probably not even a word, architecturizing. But I love how they're kind of just landscaping. That's the word I'm looking for. God damn it. I had in my head earlier, but I couldn't remember it for the life of me. <laughs> Uh, but I love how they're just kind of landscaping around the world a bit, like showing, oh yeah, now the Statue of Liberty's going to have a Captain America shield. Oh yeah, now there's this giant alien just sticking out of the ground <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Right, it's insane. Like I, I love that thing, how far the MCU is just developing as it goes along and such. Like It's it's really cool. So I love that. Uh, what's another thing I was going to say? I can't... Another thing I also liked about this film, I thought was like was, was funny and also I'm like that makes sense, is that... You know, when we meet people like like Dane Whitman, who is who Cersei is dating now at this point, she broken up with Icarus, and also when we meet Karun, like you know, like Sprite told Dane that yeah, we're like immoral, and we have special powers, and like, and, like Kingo told Karun about all of his stuff, about him being immoral and such, like, and they believe him, like no questions asked, they believe him, like like literally when the first Deviants show up in the modern day, 
attacking Cersei Sprite and Dane, like, Dane literally starts saying, like, Quirk, use your powers to do something about it, and, I, and like, Sp Sprite's like, you actually believed me? When I, when I said that, and, I'm, and I was kind of like, why wouldn't he believe you, honestly? Like, honestly, if you live in the MCU and, and someone came up to me, or to any of you, and said, yeah, I'm a mortal alien has the powers to, like, like shoot fire from their hands, and I have giant wings, I'm hiding behind this jacket, I'd be like, all right, it's cool. <laughs> like, at, one, like, at this point, like, this world has seen, like, multiple aliens, like, gods, magicians, monsters, like, like, so much of this stuff, like, why would anyone not believe, like, anything you tell them at this point, like, it's, it's crazy, like, it's all way if someone says, hey, I've, I've seen leprechauns, they're real now, I'm like, alright, I make sense, hey, I found Atlantis, alright, hey, I found, like, a floating tire, <laughs> okay, <laughs> hey, whatever, it's like that one, like that one movie, what's it called, Tire, where it's about the killer tire, like, guys, the killer tire's after me, Okay, how do we stop it? <laughs> just like, not, I would not, like, not be, not believe anything anymore. I'd be like, all right, I'm, I believe anything you tell me. Yeah, that pencil's coming to kill you. I believe that, yeah, that, that chocolate fountain is talking to you. I, I believe yeah, that, yeah, Santa Claus is actually real and he's, like, an Omega-level mutant. I believe that. Which, that's actually true, by the way, in the comics. Santa Claus is an Omega-level mutant. Like, I'm not kidding. Look it up. It's crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I like that bit. So, it's pretty cool. And, like, I love how a lot of the Eternals just, like, kind of, how they live their lives over years, like, like, it's funny also, also Droog, like, I remember, like, going back to the Icarus thing, it's kind of funny how a lot of people were saying that he might be the villain, Droog, a secret villain, because just by the way the actor looked, Barry Kogan, everyone kind of, like, is he a bad guy? Like, it's not, not the, the actor, I mean, it may sound like that, but he just has a face, just looks like he's a bad guy, so it's, but of course he wasn't, he was at one point a little bash, but he's actually a good guy in the, in the end, so that was, that was cool. Uh... And also Kingo, he's like a Bollywood star, and he's been he's been like his great grandfather and his grandfather and his father, just for generations. It's a kind of insane. It's funny. No, I keep burping. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was all cool. I thought about the ending. I guess the ending was, I I dug the ending too. It was really interesting. I liked how it's kind of like a cliffhanger ending. Like it's not like a happy ending. So like I mean, it is. They won. They saved the planet and such. But of course. At a cost, because then Irishman comes and just, like I said, you see him as over the planet, how massive he is, like, it's insane the size of him, you just see his, his the, the six eyes just over the, the sky, it's insane. And he captures, like, you know, like, so, like, Thea, Drew, and Makari all left Earth to go search, like, for the other Eternals cross humors, because, of course, I mean, there's multiple Eternals that were manufactured and created, they're, like, not, they weren't, like, organically born beings, they were just like manufactured by the Celestials and they go off searching for other Eternals hope, and tell them the truth about what they're doing and hopefully they all understand and listen so they don't kill more people. And of course, and they leave, but also then the ones who sent Earth, Cersei, can go and Fastos, they get kidnapped and are taken away, except Sprite because she's no longer Eternal so she got off that scot-free, so she's like, thank God. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was so cool how like Erichman took them and said, Hey, you've defied us and killed the Celestial. Like, we'll take, we'll leave Earth for now, but we will come back with, and we'll look at your memories and judge whether or not they are worth leaving alive. And so, so I, I find it cool, like, how they just, like, the movie, like, the happy ending, Earth is saved, but, like, the, our main heroes are just kidnapped and taken away to who knows where. Like, I think that's very interesting how it ends on like that. It's like, that was pretty cool. Uh, and again, it's the after credits also now. Both very interesting after credits that they set up a lot of big stuff. Like for the first one, introduce like you know uh, Star Fox or Eros is his real name, who is the brother of Thanos, and he's played by Harry Styles, and also met Pip the Troll, who is voiced by Patton Oswalt. So yeah, I mean I hear they actually they put out a press release saying like Entertainment Weekly did saying Harry Styles cast to play Thanos' brother Star Fox in the MCU, and I'm kind of like all right, assuming that. The Eternals come out very soon. This came out almost immediately after the premiere. I'm assuming he's in that movie. <laughs> like, so. And he was. I'm like, why'd you have to release that press thing? I'm like, come on. Uh, so. Yeah, me in the MCU. And so that's interesting. So. And he's an Eternal. So I can't wait to see what they do with that now. It's going to be very interesting what they do. Definitely for a sequel thing. Or maybe he could even be in Guardians 3. Who knows? Because he's a very Guardians heavy character. I, I saw something like that. I think he's outside. He does, like, you know. Uh, he's a galactic character, like, <laughs> Guardians way, it's not whatever. But yeah, that was pretty cool. And I remember when Pip the Troll showed up, I was kind of like, I looked at him, I was like, who, who is that guy? I know him, he's from the Infinity Gauntlet comic. 
who is he? And then he says his name, I'm like, yeah, Pip the Troll. <laughs> like, so, yeah. And Harry Styles, I'm interested in seeing out what he does with the character. I mean, I've only ever saw him in Dunkirk. I don't, I don't really remember, remember him that well from the movie, but, you know, he, maybe he'll do fine. I mean, I need to see more of him and such. We only saw him in one brief thing, but, yeah. By the same being, Thanos' brother, uh, I, was, I was hoping, like, there was rumors that they were going to show a f flashback scene of Thanos in the film when he was younger, because he actually is an Eternal with, like, the deviant gene in him, which goes into this whole theory now that apparently, uh, possibly Thanos, like, there's a whole new meme behind his plan, possibly, that the reason why he wants to, like, you know, wipe out 50% of life in the universe, because Ajax says how, when he did that, it slowed down the emergence of the Celestial on Earth, so... Like, but then, of course, now that all humanity is back, it's happening again. But because he did that, it slowed down for five years. So now a theory that apparently maybe that was Thanos' actual plan. He's aware of this. He was aware that this was happening. And he wanted to do that to stop that and save, like, trillions of lives. So when I first heard that, I was like, eh, I'm not sure. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? Maybe that, if that's the case, that'd be, oh boy, that'd be, that would really give some new means to Thanos about how, He's kind of the a, a good guy in the scenario. Like, I mean, you have to get, like, the feed him in the end because he, of course, he killed tons of people to get the brain back. But still, that would bring a whole new meaning to his whole plan. Like, holy crap. I hope they, I hope they in a later sequel, they address that, saying that was his intention. That'd be insane. So, that, that's awesome. And then, second after credit scene, also big, we see Dan Whitman find this uh, this sword that belongs to his family's ancestors because he, in the comics, they care as the Black Knight. He's a long list of characters in his family. Who be there was a previous Black Knight before him who was a villain of Iron Man, but now he's the new Black Knight. He was, he's the current one in the comics, I think, still. You know, and he will, he'll become a Black Knight at some point in the MCU, and he just looks at the sword, and like, he hears voices on it and such. And then we hear a voice off in the background just saying, Are you sure you're ready for this, Mr. Whitman? And hearing that, you, we only hear his voice. We don't, know, we don't know who he was. And I, when I heard that voice, and I was kind of like, Is that... Is that Jeffrey Wright? And I was kind of like, no, why would it be Jeffrey Wright? He's like, it's, he's the Watcher. Like, why would the Watcher be there? But it sounded like him. And apparently a few people thought that. But my one brother's friend, like, he said, it sounded like Mahershal Ali, who was playing Blade. Turns out, we looked it up, and it was Blade. So that was insane. Blade's first appearance in the MCU. Like, that didn't see that coming at all. And I mean, I guess it makes sense, because, like, Blade's film is still a while off. Like, we don't, it's res resumed that it's coming out in late 2023, like, October, November. So, but I mean, there's, there's not much to know about it still. Like, I think they have a writer and a director. Like, I'm not sure if they have a writer or a director they have. I just heard a rumor that they might have an actor, a new actor cast, uh, Delroy Lindo from The Five Bloods. Great movie, by the way. Check it out. It's on Netflix. Uh, so, yeah, that's it's coming along slowly, but like, so it's still a while off, so they're slowly trying to get Blade in the MCU just to set him up saying, yeah, and it's got a new movie coming out. So, similar to how Black Panther and Spider-Man Spider -Man showed up in Civil War before their own movies. So, and even rumored to show up in Moon Knight, so, yeah, they're really, like, planning Cedar Blade to show up in the MCU for his own movie, so, that's awesome, so I'm wondering if Miss, Miss, I'm about to call him Mr. Knight, why? I wonder if Black Knight will be in Blade, and maybe in Moon Knight in a small cameo, I have no idea, but that'd be really cool. So, yeah, uh, yeah, honestly, I think I've talked about everything else I possibly can, so, yeah, overall, like, it's a... Like, it's an okay film. Like, there's stuff I'm not a fan of in the movie. I and mean, also, like I said, like, how I said earlier, how they said, there's this guy we can't defeat, but incapacitate him early, easily. That's Icarus. Because they said, Icarus are our strongest eternal. We can't beat him. Fastos, I mean, not at first, but, like, they have, they have a hard time fighting him at first. But then, like, Fastos very easily could incapacitate him. I'm like, you could have done that earlier? Like, like why are you saying, oh, we can't defeat him? Easily incapac incapacitate him and such. So, like, I don't know. Uh, another thing also, I have one thing I'm going to say. Honestly, I'm surprised that out of all the Eternals that died, like, like three died, Ajax, Icarus, and Gilgamesh, I'm surprised that Thea didn't die. Like, honestly, I thought Thea would be the one of the characters who would die, because mostly just I didn't really think Angelia Jolie would stick around for more films, because like, apparently originally she thought her role would be a much more smaller role, but it ended up being a bigger role. So I thought maybe she would die, maybe she didn't want to do more of these films, but she's sticking around, so I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I think that's everything. If I miss something, if, and if I remember it, I'll put it in the edits. <laughs> but yeah. Like I said, overall, it's an okay film. It's not one of the greatest in the MCU, but it's a, it was it was decent. It was like a, a okay, good film. Like a lot of stuff I liked, like characters, like some of the arcs and decisions of characters, like 
uh, practical and cinematog effects and like the practical set locations and like cinematography, like all great. You know, some stuff of like killing off the characters early and like some lines dialogue and some of the jumping around wasn't too big on and such. And I wish some characters got more development like Macari. So, I mean, yeah, it's an okay film. I, I like I said, I do recommend checking it out. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a 6 out of 10. Check it out. It's still a good movie. It's not bad, I don't think. Don't listen to some of the reviews. They're, they're not, it's not that bad. Like, 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 yeah, it's, it's not bad. But yeah, that's my review for The Eternals. Um, tell me in the comments down below what did you all think of The Eternals. And uh, be mindful of spoilers, of course. Don't spoil it for someone else. Uh, so, yeah, I'll see you guys later on for another episode of Geek Called Shock for whatever I review next, either Venom or What If. So, I'll let you all know, or you'll see once it comes out. So, yeah. Um, thank you all for watching. I'll stay in the for one of those reviews for on Geek Called Shock, and, or for any of our videos coming soon to the channel. And I'll see you guys all later. Goodbye.